Welcome to the Secrets Women Keep podcast. I am your secret keeper and confidant, Lauren White. I'm a qualified counsellor and sexologist, madam of a secret society, author of Permission, and a witty, highly intuitive lounge room dancing introvert. I help you as an exceptional woman in entrepreneurship to see, love, and trust all the parts of yourself, especially the unseen. Let's pull back the curtain, light the candelabra, and remove the mask. These are the secrets women keep. Hello, and welcome to the Secrets Women Keep podcast. I'm your host and confidant, Lauren White, and in today's very special episode, we have an incredibly powerful guest. Her name is Kylie Camps. Kylie is the host of the highly charted The Kylie Camps Podcast, owner of the much-loved Kind Parenting Company. She's a speaker, event host, sleep consultant, and mum of twin boys. Kylie is an absolute force in her work. In the year that I've known her, I've already seen her shift and move into more of the work that she's really here to do, which as I see it, is to help women who value having a family to center themselves in their identities so that they can keep the balance of being open-hearted without losing themselves entirely. She's open, receptive, and always doing the work in every definition of the word. Through her Instagram profile and podcast, she's always sharing what she's reading, learning, and embodying. Although she might not have said it this explicitly, what I witness in Kylie is a constant drive to improve her perception and experience of life so that it's rich and meaningful. Here to talk the secrets of being visible when you want to be invisible is Kylie Camps. Kylie, welcome to the podcast. Oh, Lauren, could you just ring me every morning and give me that little bio? (laughs) You're so kind. Thank you for having me. No problem. No problem. And it was, it was easy to write. It just had, you know, we were just talking about this before we pressed record, but it just had ease. It was just like, yeah, this is what, this is what I've seen in Kylie over the last year that, um, that we've been connected. So you're welcome. And yes, I can definitely do that. I can send you a voice (laughs) in your DMs every morning. Now, Kylie, remember who the fuck you are. (laughs) I so feel like we all need that and just yeah, yeah thank you <laughs> thank you and thank you so much I'm just gonna say thank you in advance for creating this podcast I am so so excited to listen to you get to know your guests can't wait oh thank you and you know excitement you listeners will hear me say this again and again excitement is my favorite sensation well that and satisfaction they're kind of like (laughs) they're both right up there but excitement to me says it's the big yes right it's the big it's the goosebumps it's the it's the you know dancing on the spot it's your heart racing I just yeah so for you to say you're excited means so much to me and I just want to give you credit because exactly one year ago I was on your podcast as a guest and at the very end you said to me you said have you ever thought about having your own podcast I went yeah no (laughs) yeah no I was like yeah no I was like I'm just happy to guess at the moment just happy to guess and I want to thank you for planting that seed a year ago for you know it needed some time to germinate but for giving me the courage but isn't it funny Lauren how like you can have an idea drop in and it's just that visceral yes it's that excitement even though that idea might have dropped in before it's just all timing so um, I'm just really, really happy to hear that it's happening for you now because I know it's going to be incredibly satisfying to use your words. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I've got the same sense too. So thank you. Um, thank you so much. Here on the Secrets Women Keep podcast, I am not the biggest fan of small talk. It's part of my personality profile. I like to go deep pretty quickly. So I wanted to start today, Kylie, by asking you about the bathroom stall moments in life. I define a bathroom stall moment as one in which you're trying to hold it all together as everything feels like it's falling apart. You want to be seen, but simultaneously be completely invisible. 
Have you ever had a bathroom stall moment in your life? And if so, feel free to substitute it with being in the car or the office stall or the stairwell or the elevator, anywhere at all. Mm, This is such a a great question. And you and I spoke briefly about bathroom stall moments when you were a guest recently on my podcast. And I said to you, it's such a great term because I think each and every woman knows that feeling, you know, you say bathroom stall, but straight away it could be crying in the shower, it could be the bath, mm. losing it at work. Like it doesn't have to be the bathroom stall, but oh my gosh, I've got so, so many of them. And I guess just to give a bit of context for your listeners, I have been going through a separation. It's been two years now coming up to finalizing a divorce and having seven-year-old twins as well and a couple of different businesses and everything like that that goes along with it, I have had more bathroom store moments in the last two years than I think I've probably had in all of my other years. So it's hard for me to pinpoint one exact defining one, but two did come to mind for me. One is a recent one. It was just maybe a couple of months ago. I had walked into the gym, which my friends own. And you know, when you're doing everything to try and keep it together, you know, you're like, Mm. this is fine. I've got Mm -hmm. it. I'm going through the motions. I've got school pickup in an hour. Like I know that moving my body, I'm going to feel better. Like you, you're trying so hard to coach yourself through it, but your body is, your body's giving you up, I guess. Mm. I I just had this moment where I was on, it's an assisted pull-up machine and I was going through the motion of doing this exercise and I just had tears running down my face without even realizing it. And I was like, okay, this is like the perfect moment of literally trying to physically push through and do something. But your, my body was just saying like, no, like you, you need to listen to me and I'm going to make you listen. And I ended up having a massive, massive cry because one of the owners came over and said, how are you? And you know, when you're on the cusp and someone says, oh, how yes. are you? And you're like, oh gosh. Or it's like someone goes to give you a hug and it's like, oh, that's relief. Yes. So that was a that was a moment for me where I was just stood in the middle of the gym and there's all these people around training and just uncontrollably crying and trying to make sense of my thoughts. And that felt like a bathroom stall moment because I was really fighting against you know, keeping it together and then eventually just getting to the point where I'm like, I just have to surrender and let everything come out. Um, that was one that, as I said, most recently, I can also think, I mean, there's been so many in the last two years, Lauren, like the list is endless. And as I said to you before we started recording with our conversation today, I really want to honour the privacy of um, ending that relationship. Mm-hmm. So a lot of my bathroom stall moments, I guess if I open up the the lid to talk about those, I'm just so aware that it's not just my story to tell. Yes, yes, that's such a good point, yes. Which does make it tricky, but it all feeds back into the premise of what this episode is about, which is being visible when you'd rather be invisible And having a business that relies upon showing up and being seen and truthfully sharing my life has been such a juxtaposition of trying to get that balance um, in a way that feels right for me, that balance of showing up and being seen and sharing enough that I feel like I'm adding value, but also honoring the, the beauty of privacy. Yes. Yep. Yep. And you've, you've made a really good point about our bathroom sore moments and our secrets that we might be okay with sharing them, but we also need to consider the other people that are either involved or complicit in that secret and whether, uh, whether we truly can share that because it does involve them or it does have an impact on them. Like, for mm. example, there are things about myself I'd be happy to share with certain, with select people or select groups of women, but because they involve other people or my husband or um, my closest friends, I don't actually disclose that and I keep those things a secret. And I think that's for... I think actually think that's a very healthy version of secret keeping because 
if we proceed to go and share the secret or share the bathroom sore moment, then um, it can have much gra- a much greater impact on someone else, which is not um, which is not the sole benefit of sharing that secret. It should p- be purely to absolve you, not to yeah, not to involve someone mm. else who doesn't have a say or can't consent to that. Yes. And I think like even just hearing you reframe that for me there, that's so helpful. Thank you. I, I also, when it comes to the bathroom stall moments, I can share with you that I've had my bathroom stall moments that it feels like I'm cracking and it feels like I'm breaking apart and things are spilling out of me involuntarily. And I can see an image in my mind of when, you know, going through a separation, being on the floor of my house downstairs, writing a letter because a decision had been made that felt very much, um, I just felt really, really out of control. And so I, I can remember just being sat on my floor. It was under the stairs, concrete floor, writing this letter and just having this moment of feeling like I've hit absolute rock bottom. But then I can also share another, I guess, bathroom storm moment which was in my early 20s which was more to do with my mental health so that's a whole other bathroom storm Ooh, moment yeah. when you, when you feel like your mental health is so compromised and you just want to crawl out of your own skin to escape and then there's you know the circumstantial ones I don't know if that yes. makes sense yes it does you've just mm. <laughs> you can hear the bing 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 yes yes very different what you've described, there are bathroom sore moments that are precipitated by very different things. Like you said, mm. one is one is internal, it's intrinsic, it's it's a lot of things building up that want release and that namely comes through in physical health issues, mental health issues. The other one, yeah, is con- is it's about context. It's about the circumstances. It's about the position that you find yourself in. Mm, yes. Mm. So your bathroom store moments. Mm, I just want to go back to something that you started to share with, with the bathroom store moment that you had in the gym. And this is really important. I think a lot of people will miss this piece. What I heard from you was that your body was already showing you what it wasn't really prepared to do or was what it wasn't in a state to do. And it was a really good example of how the body can or your body in this situation started to speak before your emotions could even catch up. Is there anything that you want to add to that in from what your experience was? Mm. Well, I think that it's so important, like you said, to really tune into what our body is telling us. I often saying our body language gives us away before our thoughts does. You know, if yeah. you notice when you retreat from someone or when you're inclined to reach out and touch someone, you know, those sorts of things. But yes, you're right. In this instance, I was doing the things that I guess my what my friend Libby would call my wise adult brain was telling me to do, which was keep moving. You've got school pickup, you know, you'll feel good after a workout, Um, you know, push, 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 like the real masculine do keep going, stay on task type of thing. But I guess my more feminine emotional brain was like, Hey, we're not here to work out today. (laughs) You've got tears running down Mm. your face. Like take, take note of this. And it was almost this, like observer point of view of seeing myself trying to push through a workout, but then also seeing this woman with tears running down her face in the middle of a busy gym. And so, yeah, it was really just going, okay, I need, this is, this is louder right now. My Mm. body is saying this, this release is more important. It's louder. This is going to be better for you than trying to push through a workout. And it was, it ultimately was (sighs) when I had, when I had the chance to just spew it out and I wasn't making sense. And it was my friend's husband who owns the gym and he is like the blokiest bloke. And (laughs) like (laughs) later on, his wife said, please tell me he gave you a hug. And he did. He was brilliant. But it was just that like, oh, I need to get out everything that's going in my head right now. Like I just needed needed to spew it out. And that was so much better than actually physically pushing through. I needed to emotionally sort of purge. Yes. Yes. 
And doing it through the body has its place. It has its time and moments. I just wonder if the heightened state of the bathroom sore mo- moment of the emotional outpouring, it's just it's just emotions take precedence. Like what is what is in just wants out. And it sounds like you were able to find a sense of release and relief from doing that in that very mm. moment. Yes. And I think that, you know, for anyone listening, that is your bathroom stall moment, isn't it? It's when you just can't keep your shit together any longer. Yeah. And it's like, you just, you have to drop the sticks. Yep. Sometimes you've got to, you've got to drop the bundle to be able to see clearly what order things need to be picked back up in. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That's perfect. That's a perfect way of putting it. And anything that you, anything that you do from then on, like anything that you try to push through or you try to swallow down or you try to put a mask over or you try to pretend isn't happening. It's, I just want listeners to know it's inevitable. It's going to come out. You may as well allow it to come out when it's asking to come out so that you can get to the next best thing that's waiting for you. Nothing like nothing good is going to come from suppressing, um, from suppressing that moment or covering it up. Mm, And for people who do struggle to access it, which I, I completely, I've got my hand in the air right now, even though people can't see me, but I (laughs) I can do that. I can either freeze or over function. They're my go-to moves. So when I'm like, oh, I know I need to access this emotion, but I'm having trouble accessing it, I find breath works really, really helpful um, in dropping into what needs to come to the surface because there's nowhere to go during a breath works experience or class. And it really forces you to look at what's within you and hold it and see it and know it's okay. And I think for me, probably in the last couple of years, the biggest thing that I've learned, Lauren, is often the act of not wanting the problem or the thought of not the thought of wanting to be free of problems is so much worse than the actual problem Mm. if that makes sense it's like this Mm -hmm. longing to not this longing to not have any problems is so much bigger than actually just facing the little problems that you have oh yep completely agree completely agree and if you if you kind of deconstruct what you just said, it my my initial interpretation is like the wishing that we didn't have any problems is the more kind of passive approach to life. It's almost like the it's almost like the I just when I win the lottery, that's when like everything will be okay, all mm. my money problems will go away. Whereas when you actually tackle the problems, there's some satisfaction in that. There's some there's a sense of empowerment. There's a sense of I'm taking action. I'm involved in my own life. I'm a player in my own life. I am, um, I'm active in my own life. And that is for me is far more of a turn on or allows me to feel like I'm living a turned on life far more than the anything that any of the mindset that says when this happens or if only I had no problems, then I'd be this way. No, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't because you wouldn't have shown yourself how you've got gumption. Mm, totally there was a podcast I listened to maybe six or so months ago and it was I can't think of the gentleman's name and it's going to drive me insane I'll have to let you know so you can put it in the show notes but um he was speaking about you know living a meaningful life and happiness and he was saying that his outlook is to look at the problems that are in his life and pretend that they have been perfectly crafted and hand-picked for him like as if life is a video game and every every obstacle that's in his way was designed for him for his growth and I really lean into that when I'm struggling and feeling overwhelmed and I just go oh okay yes this sucks right now and I there's you know a million things that I'd rather be doing than facing this or if I get in a bit of a a loop of why is this happening to me or how can this be happening I go okay these challenges have been handpicked for me for some reason and it kind of is a bit of an antidote to staying frozen Yes. Yeah. I like that. It personalizes it. And, Mm. and it, again, it encourages more action. Like I, okay, how can I face this rather than the, why is this happening to me? Yes. Takes us out of victim mode. That's what I'm hearing. I really like that. Anything that personalizes 
what we experience will always get my will always get my vote so that we feel like we are unique and special and I think that everyone needs to feel unique and special Mm, absolutely and I think that framing as you said personalize it it puts you back in the driver's seat and it gives Mm. you what what I find is it allows me to access hindsight but in the current moment because I'm like oh I know that once I'm through this challenge I'll look back and I'll be able to see the growth that's delivered me but you don't get the benefit of hindsight until you have like until you're through yeah. it but just being able to tap into it whilst you're it whilst you're in the chaos even if it's just for a couple of moments of acknowledging okay there's going to be some sort of post-traumatic growth or you know yeah. post-challenge post-challenge growth from this it's that little slither of hope that allows you to keep pushing through and sliding back into the driver's seat I think yeah I love that I love that and something I said to myself is this is going to be a bloody good story one day (laughs) this is going to be a bloody good story like no and the, the thing I say to women and the thing I say to my secret society members is no memoir starts out I did a thing, it was perfect, the end. Like no memoir totally. sounds like that. You read a memoir because you want to know, wow, how did you get from this point to this point? Like what challenges did you face? How did you show up? What did you do? How did you feel? Like that's why people love other people's stories is because there's mm. always going to be a struggle. There is no well, memoir well, that's it. perfect. I mean, you think of any good movie, there's the hero's journey, there's yeah. that arc, there's the challenge to overcome, then there's that moment of realising that it's all on you to do it. And so, yes, I love that. And I'm smiling because you said, you know, it's going to be a good story. And that's something I often speak about. And in particular, since, you know, becoming single as an adult, and I'm not single right now, but going through this, you know, divorce and people asking about dating and stuff like that. Like my philosophy is go for the story, go mm-hmm. for the story. Don't, don't, don't go penning your hopes on, on anything, but go to be the observer and see what happens. And you can yeah. apply that to anything from dating to taking your kids on a holiday on your own, even if you're terrified of, and it sounds like the worst thing ever, like just go for the story. Yeah. Yes, I really, it, it, I, it yeah, really takes like the that. Pressure off. It takes does. The pressure off. Yeah. It does, and and it's interesting, isn't it? Because people want to make memories, and people look at social media to look at what other people are doing. It's like, well, those things are possible for you too. Um, you know, it might not look exactly the same, but you can take those steps as well and create those stories and create those memories and create those feelings and meaning and those visuals and photos and everything if you are willing to create a story that might not that might be more i don't know less than perfect or put it that way but you've got to have the it all starts with courage right just have the courage and the curiosity to do it yeah you took the words out of my mouth curiosity it's the big one i think yeah it's a yeah. 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 It's a big one. And we can in a, you know, if we're living life in a way that is very structured and regimented and we feel like everything has to have order and we have to have control, we can lose that curiosity and we can lose that um, sense of wonder about our lives because we are just moving through the motions. So if you feel that way, bring everything back to curiosity. What am I just asking yourself? What am I curious about? What, what picks my interests? It doesn't have to be your lifelong vocation or passion or anything. It's just everything, everything wonderful. I promise you starts with curiosity. What would it be like to do this? What, it, what would it be like to try this? Um, oh, I, I could yeah. not agree more. I'm sat here nodding because I'm like, yes, curiosity, go as the observer, get curious, take the pressure off. And when there's less pressure, everything is so much more fun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. When, um, when you try to over plan, when you try to have an Excel spreadsheet of your life or your experiences, and then this happens, it's like the wedding day that has everything down to five minute increments. Like, <laughs> like, mm. like how much fun can you have when you're following an Excel spreadsheet to a T? Like, are you in the moment or are you 
outside of the moment, looking at the Excel spreadsheet, trying to make sure that everything follows that um, in perfect order. And you know what I'll add to that as well is I think, and this is just my own personal experience of I have been in a very controlled situation for a long time and having that controlled situation dissolve over the you know the last whatever amount of time it's really allowed me to see that it's not real anyway like you know you you have this this, <laughs> this illusion of control yeah. and this illu- this illusion of certainty yeah. and that's one of the things you know people on social media often ask questions all sorts of questions and, you know, Kylie, five years ago, I feel like I would have given a much more certain answer. Like, you know, well, certainly this is the right response. But in going through a divorce and everything like that, it's like, I have no idea. I, I don't know what the universe is going to serve me up because, look, here I was thinking that this marriage would be forever and, and it's not. So it's like provided this, um, you know, one of the positives is that having that dissolve it makes me less attached to the permanence of things and I guess less attached to the certainty and I'm so much more fluid with going, well, you know, this is what I think, but that could change. Yes, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, like, I, and so then I'm not tying my attachment to, I guess, the certainty and the the, con- the things that I thought I could control, if that makes sense. Oh, it makes complete, it makes complete sense and there can be, nothing more liberating than giving the answer. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, all I can say is in this moment is X, Y, and Z and being okay with that, giving yourself permission to do that. So, um, I love what you said and it's for you to say, we need to be honest. Social media is impermanent anyway. Stories last for 24 hours. I mean, people might remember how you will remember how they feel watching you, but just having the courage in that moment to say when one of your audience asks you a question, because I know your audience asks you a lot of questions and just being, I've, I've actually witnessed you saying, I don't know. I'm not sure at this point in time. And it's actually the boldest, bravest answer and truest answer that you can give sometimes and it completely absolves you of needing things to sound certain when in all reality you're probably going to evolve and shapeshift. Well, completely. And that's something that I always say as well over on social media is that we have to remember our truth is fluid. People are like so binary. It's like if you say something on a Monday, then you absolutely must believe that forever. And it's like, no, 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 no. Life is about growing. It's about knowing what you don't know or being open to what you don't know. It's about changing your opinion and your opinion changes based off the life experiences that you go through, what you find out, age, everything, Um, not to mention like your own beliefs from childhood. Like we're always changing and so I guess one of the things with social media is people do I have found some people will try and hold you to this like this weird standard of if you say something then that's it like that that's your truth and you're not allowed to move from that you know I still have people say to me well you said a few years ago you weren't interested in going overseas but the other day you said that you'd like to go to Italy and it's like yeah we change but sometimes people just aren't as open to understanding that your truth is fluid. Everyone's truth is fluid. It's just more amplified when someone's looking at you through a tiny little square on their phone. Yes, yes, yep, 100% agree. Lots of nodding happening over here. (laughs) Um, So you're someone who has been very visible over the years. I mean, your Instagram stories alone are prolific. Like before I, before I <laughs> started, a okay, I'm just a little bit, just a little bit, just oh, let me embellish <laughs> just a little bit. Before I started following you, I was like, I was like, okay, I yeah, started following you because I was going to be on your podcast. I merely like, I, I didn't know who you were before you reached out to me. And then, and then I obviously got to know you. And then when you were sharing our podcast episode and you were tagging me and tagging me and tagging me and tagging me in all of these stories, it must've been 10 stories in a row. And just, I was listening to you share and share and share and share. And I was like going, oh my gosh, this is a whole new level of 
Instagram that I just hadn't been exposed to up until early um, early 2020. But you, like what I learned from you is you keep generating and you keep sharing with your audience and you appear to show up even when times are tough personally for you. So with the topic of being visible when you want to be invisible, I wanted to center the conversation around if there's a secret to showing up even when you feel the pull otherwise and what happens when you misjudge? Like do people feel that your energy is out of alignment? Mm. Well, I think, like, I don't know if I can say, well, this is the secret for everyone to show up because I just, again, being honest, saying I just don't know. But what I know for myself is that showing up and sharing that things are hard and sharing enough that I feel like people will understand it aligns with, I guess, my value and my purpose of trying to make a difference for women. So that's a big driving force for me is going, okay, you know what? Yes, today I would much rather take a Valium and stay in bed and hide. But, <laughs> but, but, if I, but if I get up and I show that, yes, I felt that way, but hey, I still went for a walk and I still journaled and I did X, Y, Z, if that can provide some sort of um, semblance of, I don't know, comfort or anything like that to another woman out there, even if I don't know her personally, then I feel a real sense of fulfillment, which is important to me. So that's a big one for me. Um, I do think people know when you're phoning it in and there have definitely been times in the last two years that I have felt like I was phoning it in, like I might have a commitment where contractually I need to share something and I really don't want to be sharing that day. Uh, Yeah. And, you know, and that's just the nature of the beast, just being completely honest. Um, And I think that people can judge when you're not being your authentic self and I mean, I, I'm sure people can tell, I don't get a lot of feedback from people saying like, oh, I felt like you were really phoning it in today, but I know myself that I can yeah. feel it. And I guess the other thing I can remember hearing Brene Brown talking, you know, she obviously speaks so much about vulnerability and I'm a huge fan of her work. And I can remember something she said in one of her books was along the lines of, she only shares something if her healing is not dependent on the way someone reacts. You know, I'm paraphrasing there. But that's another one for me is if I can show mm. up and share something, I'm only sharing it if I feel safe enough to do so. So I'm not sharing the things that I'm still a bit fragile on and I'm still piecing together myself. I'm not sharing the entirety of those. Yes. So that, yep. yep. So I guess for me, you know, building an, building an Instagram following, I used to share a lot more of a lot more personally than I probably am right at this minute in life, but I've had to learn the value of privacy and how important it is to keep some things for myself. That's something that's really important to me now. So having my journal, like my journal is where I spew out all of my innermost thoughts um, and I'll take some of those threads and share the ones that I feel are helpful but I don't feel an obligation to share each and every single thought because I know that I need to keep some of that stuff just for me. Yes, most definitely. So you're speaking to being selective and discerning about what you share and being very cognizant of where you're at in your own healing process so that your audience isn't receiving almost like your own self-therapy. It's something that you've moved through and then you're determining that it's safe for, safe for you to share because there's something that they're going to gain from your own insights and your own experience. Yes. And then I guess also just for people who are listening along that don't share things on social media, just even in real life, there have been so many times, Lauren, where I have not wanted to be seen, you know, whether it's the school pickup. And it's like you're going through this really hard time and the last thing that you want is to have a conversation with a mum, you know, that you know that they're going to try and tease that information or, mm. you know, just seeing someone that you feel has a, has you know, and it's all, it's just, it's perceived, you know, like you perceive someone has a judgment about you and you just don't want to see that person. 
And yeah. my little my little sister has joked the last couple of years that when I want to be invisible, I'll have my black hat on, and she calls it my um my Joe Goldberg hat from the series You because he always wears a baseball cap. Yes, it's like, yes. It's like all of a sudden he can follow anyone if he's got this baseball cap on. No one. Can yeah, yeah. Yep. And so I I definitely have had moments when I've been feeling quite low and what I would say is feeling depressed where I've just put this hat on. It's like that's my signal. I'm hiding from the world. This is my little force field, um, you know, hat on. I can only see what's in front of me. I, I, I'm just dealing with what feels like I think what I can actually deal with, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Most definitely. It's, it's, uh, it's armor. It's a mask. It's something armor, that, yes, yeah, it's yes. something that helps you. It's a self-protection mode that you, that you need in, in those times when, you know, you're not up for, for the questions, you're not up for the probing, you're not up to yes. reveal um, where it's not going to serve you as well. And I guess as well for people listening, who might be able to relate to that when you don't feel like being seen but you have to be visible so whether it's a school pickup it's getting groceries it's showing up to work those sorts of times just knowing that you actually can do it even though you don't want to and when you do it you build up a little bit of evidence and a little bit of proof that it's okay and that you're fine um I think is important because otherwise it would be easier to be really reclusive and not face anything but actually taking the action putting on your armor so whether it is a black baseball cap or it is a imagined force field that you have to put around yourself which I am still not above doing I will do that for sure (laughs) if I have if I have to go somewhere and I've got the kids and I'm like oh I don't want to be here like I'm feeling gross I'm feeling this I just imagine like I've got this force field around me this bubble just get it done yep yep and it's safe for us to do that we should not feel like that we need to we need to be visible all the time. And something that you've spoken about on one of your podcast episodes is your experience with PMDD, which um, if anyone isn't familiar with the term, it's premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And when you're in the luteal phase, which is the phase just before your menstrual phase, you might not feel like being visible. You might truly need that introspective time to look after yourself and to tend to yourself and it's just not in alignment to be out there trying to shine when your body and your spirit are asking you to do something completely different. Mm, Absolutely. I'm so glad that you brought that up, Lauren, because knowing your cycle and knowing where you are has been the biggest unlock in so many areas of my life. I can't even begin to tell you that the whole other podcast. (laughs) Yes. But just knowing, okay, this is where I'm at in my cycle. So I'm not going to overbook myself. I'm going to go easy. I know I'm going to feel, you know, I I predict that I might feel X, Y, Z. And just going more like progress over perfection during those times or completely allowing myself to retreat. And knowing that when I retreat and I have a dark day, it's just knowing that that's okay and it doesn't mean it's forever. And it's not reflective of going, oh, you know, I'm in a depressive state for the rest of my life. It's just today's a low day and today I don't want to be seen and tomorrow's a new day. Yes. Yep. Yep. Knowing your cycle and being aware of what's approaching is such a game changer so that you don't try to live as though you are the sun that can just come out every single day and shine. It might, it's probably not possible and it's actually okay for it to not be possible. I don't know about you, Carly, but I have superpowers in each of the four different phases and as dark as some of those luteal phases have gotten, I am, I am an absolute truth teller. So whoever uh, whoever listened to a podcast to, during that time or whoever read parts of permission when I was writing it during that phase or whoever is my client during that phase, you are actually in for a real treat because those ebbs and flows are, are actually to the benefit 
and for the highest good of not just myself but everyone else. So if we can harness those other superpowers we get and know when we're not going to be so visible or visible in different ways, like mm. audio, video might be good. Video might be good when you're ovulatory, but audio might be better when you're in that truth teller phase where you've still got energy but and you want to speak, but you don't necessarily want to be seen. So we can... Yeah, Absolutely. I don't know if you've got anything, if you've got any experience on that that you'd um, that you'd be open to sharing, I'd love to hear it. Well, just listening to you speak then, Lauren, I was just thinking a real theme, I guess, for this conversation today for me, from, from, from my ears, is that fluidity of going, you know, my truth is fluid, my cycle is fluid, some weeks I'm this, some weeks I'm that, and it's, it's, got, it's being okay with that. And mm-hmm. I think for me understanding and you know and I'm I'm embarrassed to admit it but I shouldn't be embarrassed but I'll just own it it wasn't until you know recently in my 30s understanding that men have a 24-hour hormonal cycle like every morning they get a dump of hormones and it's consistent and it's regular whereas for us of course I understood there was a 28-day cycle but I didn't understand the gravity of how much we move through it and what that actually means for our everyday life. You know, like I used to think, why can't I show up this way, you know, that I was last week? Whereas now I'm like, oh, I know, like I completely know and it's going to be fine and swings and roundabouts and I'll move through it and I'll get back to feeling that way. And it's, it's that impermanence and it's that fluidity, which I also connect with being really feminine. You know, our feminine energy allows us to dip in and out of tasks and move through things with so much more ease and whilst there can be you know one end of the stick when you think about that one end of the stick is oh that's so not fair that men get fresh hormones every 24 hours and (laughs) that they have this stable kind of foundation but like you said the other end is when you're feeling like you don't want to be visible to the outside world and it could be to do with your cycle it's about focusing on what is visible So for you, there are obviously parts when you're riding or you're working that, as you said, you feel like you are more armed to tell the truth or it's a different truth for you during that time and it's a truth that really serves you and serves your community. So that's what's visible. So it's just adjusting what part of you is visible and what your expectation is, I guess. I love that. I love that. That is just a whole... Yes, that's a whole other layer of permission and I think that that will help if anyone's got a business where they do need to be visible online, if that, if you can take that nugget with you is to not, the the learning, the piece there isn't to stop being visible, it's to be visible in the ways that serve you for where you're at so that there's still consistency but just the way that it looks or the way that it comes through might be different. So if you're in menstrual Mm. phase and you get a real, a really incredible download that you want to share, just type it in stories or just use another photo and type, use text. But when you want to, when you're happy to be visible and you're happy to speak and that feels really easy to you, then get out and speak and Mm. rather than just being locked in like oh well I just don't want to be visible so doing nothing at all but consistency is really key and that's something that I've really taken from witnessing you Carly is that you are so consistent online and yeah yeah oh sorry I was just going to jump in there before I lose this thread because just as you were speaking then I was so glad that you you were mentioning a few things then because I was like oh practical like I'd love to give some practical tips like when you just said about working you know using what actually feels right for you during that time an example that I can give for anyone who's listening is Snapchat used to be a really strong leg of building audience and business for me and I could see that like you know I was so consistent I'm talking like seven years ago when I started to build a community every single day. I was on Snapchat every day sharing all sorts of things as consistent. Like you could set your what your clock by me being on Snapchat every morning at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. And so realizing now my life is different. Some days I wake up and my kids are with me and they're asleep on a mattress on my floor because they're obsessed with me when they're with me. <laughs> and so from the moment we get up, 
it's all three of us. We're together. It's, you know, the school lunches, it's a school rush. And then other days I'm waking up and my boyfriend's staying over. So that's a different part of my life. And then some mornings I wake up and I'm on my own. And so it's like, okay, my life isn't as linear and consistent. So I can't, I don't feel that I can be as controlled and show up as consistent. So what else can I do? So an example of this is I've recently done, and I'm just trialing it. I don't know whether I'll keep up with it, but so far so good is I batched 14 days of really short podcast episodes that are like pep talks that I would have given over on stories or Snapchat. And I scheduled them to go live 5 a.m. every morning for two weeks just to see how that Mm. felt to have that content going live, but not being dependent upon me. So for those who are listening, you know, because I imagine that you will have women who are building a following or a business or a brand. Yes. Yep. It's consistency is important. I'm not going to lie. So there are times when you don't want to be visible, but it's like, okay, what other modalities can I use? And just as you said, Lauren, whether it's, you know, instead of getting on video and speaking to camera, is it writing it out? Is it a post? Is it, you know, even regramming an old post just getting a little bit um what's the word thinking outside of the box with how you can still show up and serve Mm. that doesn't pull you out of alignment or doesn't stress you out so that's just an example that I've been able to I guess be there for my community who want to hear those podcasts and they've done really really well but it's not coming at the cost of me having to say to the kids all right boys you need to go downstairs and be quiet while I do this because that's just not real life for me Oh, yes. And yes. And I'm exalting right now. (laughs) Exalting, not a word that's uh, in my everyday lexicon. But I mean, the reason why I'm getting so excited is because the one thing that I worked out that's so stressful about motherhood isn't what you've got to do. It's the feeling of being torn between two different things. The feeling of being like that is what creates stress in motherhood so where and you know and whatever it else it it could be a business um for a lot of my listeners it will be um who are doing their own thing but it could whatever it else whatever else it is that you're passionate about or going to an activity or a sport or a work working out or meeting up with friends it's when you feel torn that you've got the that you've got the stress and that's when you've got what feels like a problem on your hands or a dilemma on your hands. So what you've just spoken into is you've eliminated that sense of being torn between two things by really using your time wisely so that things can go out without you ever having to experience that and you can just be Mm. completely present with what's in front of you. And that's in line with my values, which I'm really big on trying to encourage women to identify what their values are, because if you don't know what your values are, it can be really hard to feel fulfilled and aligned. And so for me being present with the boys, and I don't always get it right, I'm a normal mum, but for me being present with the boys and being a role model to them is one of my highest values. So feeling pulled and in conflict and out of alignment when I'm also wanting to share, because that's another one of my values is trying to make a difference to women. That's when you feel stretched. And when you're stretched and pulled, you kind of become an asshole. You know, like you're you're snappy and it's like you're carrying around this tension and you're frowning, your brows furrowed, your mouth's tight, which I know you've spoken about before, like just relax your Mm. mouth, you know, Mm -hmm. relax your body. And so for those listeners who who do have little ones and can relate to this when you're feeling stretched it's going okay this system isn't working what are some systems I can put in place that map towards the values that are most important to me and I don't think that you can have everything but I think that you can have what's important to you yes yes I'm I'm letting that one, and hopefully listeners are too. I'm just letting that one marinate for a moment. Yes, you can. You can't necessarily have everything, but you can have what's important to you. Yeah, and just if it feels like it's out of your reach, you're going. Well, I know what's important, but I can't reach it. Then I would just encourage people to be curious, which is another word we've mentioned a lot. Mm. Be curious. Be curious about the systems that are in your life, and try and think a little bit of you know outside the box. Definitely, definitely. There is, um, there's so many, uh, there's so much 
conditioning to be unraveled and unlearn when it comes to in air quotations the way things are done there are no like there are there aren't any rules about what you should eat at at what time and what and the way that your week should look and and what you do with your kids and how you organize like before school care or after school care or activities like none of that it's all on you get to you get to decide you get to decide what all of that looks like and how it works for you and as you mentioned before if you're not attached then you're just curious about it and you can change things it's like okay that was worth a try because it is worth a try because you could have been really pleasantly surprised but if it isn't working then just switch it up there's no like just exper- get experimental as though your life mm. is an adventure. It does not have to be the same, like ho hum, like yeah. dissatisfying Try something else routine. on. Try something else on. Try wearing your favorite outfit on a work day. Try um, just try something different because you know if you do what you've always done, you're gonna get it's got like you're gonna be and you're not gonna be living in line with your values so um yeah I really appreciate you I really appreciate you sharing that and values it's something that we can lose sight of when we're in doing mode oh totally and look I am the first person as well to acknowledge that it's easy. Well, I shouldn't say it's easy, but it's one thing for us to be sat here and have this conversation about knowing your values when we work for ourselves and we do have a certain level of um, autonomy and control over our life that some people feel that they don't have. But what I would encourage people who feel that way is to notice it and to be curious about what parts of your life you can improve. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. I just yeah. I hear so much. I hear so much from women who will say to me you know it, it's easy for you to say Kylie and they're saying it with love you know it's it's one thing for you to say Kylie that exercise is important because you do have the freedom to say okay well after this podcast I'm going to go for a workout or you know there are nights when you don't have the kids so you can fit things in but just don't be so focused on how other people are doing it and mm. look at your reality don't yes. spend energy being like oh well it's easy for someone who has their own business to do xyz yeah that's just it's just wasted energy look at yeah. your life tap into some of your masculine energy where it's the doer it's the objective thinker look at what's in front of you personally and spend your energy on that mm. yeah yeah rather, rather than looking outwards yep Yep, hundred, hundred and one percent agree. And I think one of the most damaging and destructive thoughts we can have is it's okay for them. Like mm. I, I know that in my darkest moments of you know being postpartum the second time and trying to rebuild my business, and I know that I was stuck in some of that thinking of looking at other entrepreneurs that had teams like teams of 10 and I was just like it's okay for them they've got a team and just but it didn't incite it doesn't incite action it doesn't it keeps you wallowing it keeps you in victim mode so wherever you can use other and so I'm ad-libbing here from what I'm kind of extending on going in another direction with what you said but use other women as inspiration news like say okay I can see Kylie's doing it that way what about that appeals to me what about that could work for me how if I want to do something like that how would I need to do it to like you said to fit in with my reality how much more empowering is that than it's all right for her because she's got this and that and I don't have that and then you take no action and nothing changes so totally And even just when you were saying that, Lauren, just thinking this has been a big one for me lately and I've spoken about this over on my podcast as well about noticing when you feel expansion in your body versus when you feel restriction or closure or tightening up. And when you're having those thoughts about, you know, feeling envious of someone else or as though, you know, you've got it worse than someone else, which you might very well have it worse, but mm. noticing noticing those feelings, if they feel like tightening and closure, that's not on the path. Where are the yeah. thoughts that feel like expansion and opening you up? And it's chasing, I guess, as you said, it's not the specifics of going, 
well, if so-and-so does X, Y, Z, then I'm going to do X, Y, Z. But it's going, I admire that so-and-so appears to represent this feeling for me. Mm. You know, the mm. feeling that I'm picking up that they represent, and believe me, it could be way off. Like I'm sure that people think certain things about me, you know, whatever it is, and I'm like, I would never use that word to describe myself. So it's about your own perception. Yeah. But it's like, what what is it that you're at- attracted to? And then working backwards to fill in the blanks of how you could achieve that feeling. So it's not like I need to follow the steps someone else is taking, but it's like, okay, that person represents fun or spontaneity or um, courage or whatever it is. How could I work backwards and fill in those own steps for myself to have more of that? Yeah, I love that. I love that. And again, it personalizes it and it makes, it centers the feeling, not the action. Although the action is very important, but it's not about you doing a workout. It's about, or people seeing you do a workout. It, like in all honesty, it's probably about the feelings that they think that they perceive are being generated from you doing that workout. And that's the thing that they want. Yes. It's like, okay, well, she's, you know, doing her workout. So maybe it's consistency. You might yeah. want more consistency in one area of your life. Yeah. So unraveling it and being, I just am so much, I'm just a really big fan of trying to encourage people to point the finger at themselves rather yeah. than out, oh, yeah. rather than outward. Oh and yeah. It, it, it's a process. <laughs> yeah, it is a process. It is a process, but that's what we're here to do because we don't empower women for as long as we go, oh, I'm sorry, you can't do this. And then like try to over explain why we can do it. Well, the only reason I can do this is because basically I spent eight years being an entrepreneur and, and, and this just happens to me like there's no, that no one benefits from that sense of like over explaining how you found yourself in this position and justifying it. What does help if it's like, okay, what feelings is it that you want to feel? What, how, how can you make that happen? What's one small step that you can take to finding out more about signing up to something that would really change your perception of yourself or remind you that you're adventurous or remind you that can, you can be spontaneous or all of those qualities that you've lost touch with over the years. So, um, I absolutely. Really, yeah, I really like it. So Kylie, you kept your intimate relationship secret from your audience for the first six months <laughs> or so. <laughs> about the first six months so I, I kind of calculate how rude <laughs> how rude how could she withhold on us like that but what oh, I really gosh. wanted to ask is did you have moments where you were answering your audience's questions and you wanted to just spill it um oh yes and no I guess because I do oh this is such an interesting one um <laughs> yes and no so I guess the thing oh uh, look at me getting all tongue-tied I'm like oh. <laughs> um yes and no there, there have Mark and I have now we met a year ago next month so by the time this podcast up it will we would have known each other for over a year mm-hmm. and it's been so good like just so good so nice and it's been really nice to just have that for myself because, you know, I I had shared other parts of my personal life years ago. And again, it comes back to that learning the beauty of privacy. And it's been so nice to just have that for myself. But then there have been other times when women would reach out and say, you know, I, I'm so afraid I'll never find anyone or I'm scared to go on a date. And I definitely had impulses of being like, I want to share my story with you and provide some sort of encouragement or I don't even know what I'd be providing there, but there have been times where I've wanted to share more, but the, the pull to share is far less than the pull to honor what Mark and I have. And Mark is like the least superficial person you could imagine. He's not interested in being tagged in anything he's not interested in social mm-hmm. media um you know we uh, when I met him he didn't know anything about me having a following or anything like that and one of my things that I said to him was I would value it if you don't follow my stuff online and you don't listen to my podcasts until or if ever you get to know me really well because 
I had had experiences where I had met other people and it's almost like a narrative runs away with them. They get this story about who I am based off what they see online and they fill in the blanks far too quickly. Yeah. And yeah. so with Mark straight away, I could tell that there was something special there and I just wanted to be so seen by him for just being who I am with just without you know without the bells and whistles and I yeah. and that's what, and we have that so yeah it's been really really special oh I love that I love it and I'm just I'm doing the oh. Oh. <laughs> the reason why is that um you're tapping into the beauty of being truly seen, like truly seen with not with nothing, like you said, without the bells and whistles, without the preconceived notions or ideas or perceptions of, oh, she said that on her podcast, and then already having that, having that, like as you said, that narrative in place. You are talking mm. about being seen just as you are for who you are whenever you're in contact with him. Yes, and that has just been the biggest gift I think that I've had in years. And it's so interesting, I guess, getting to know Mark and getting to know myself um, as well at the same time. I just, I feel like it's been so healthy, which is really, really nice. And that's, I guess, I don't feel, how can I say this? I think sometimes people are sharing things because they're relying on the feedback and the accolades to build that foundation for them. It's like, this is the validation. That's what it is. Yeah. And and I have, I, I don't feel any need at all to share anything about him and I, because it feels very real. I don't, I don't know. I think that, you know, and I do, I do wonder if I've done this in the past where you've shared things because it has been part of a narrative that you wanted to be true. Yes. Oh. Mm. Oh. Can you follow that thread for a minute? There's something. Oh there. gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I think. Uh, okay, I'm going to share something that I've not spoken about before, but I think what's interesting is, you know, and this is not about comparing one person to another. It's just observing and noticing. Being with someone from your early twenties versus meeting someone and. Uh, I, I'll just I'll just try and speak as freely as possible. Being with someone from your early twenties versus meeting someone, you know, in your mid thirties, for me, and noticing how completely opposite they are, without going oh comparing one to the other, but just observing these are two like wildly wildly different people, and noticing that that growth and change happens, and how in relationship. Um, it's such a gift if you can really grow together. But noticing, I guess that how, I don't know how to word this, Lauren. If you if you can jump in and help me, I'm not sure. But I guess just noticing such a difference has made me be able to reflect on things and go, wow. For a, for a couple of years there, I really wasn't honoring who I truly was because I was just going through the motions. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if that makes I don't know if that makes sense. It does, does it? it does. Well, what I'm hearing is you stepping into your relationship with Mark now, you there's a sense of intentionality about how you do things whereas before which which set, comes across as being very it's very heart-centered and very soul-centered. Whereas what I what I was tapping into intuitively when I was hearing you speak about your relationship that started in your early 20s with Matt was that maybe it was more about the ex- maybe it was more about the strategic and the external and what you think that you should what you think yeah, that I, you should do or who you should be or what you should project i guess if i was going to word that again what i would say is it's been really really eye opening for me noticing the conditioning that i've been able to let go and shed and feel free of that i didn't realize existed And, you know, I have a therapist who has said to me, wow, there's been so much conditioning that you didn't realize you were carrying until you put it down. And so I guess in getting to know Mark and getting to know myself, and when I say it feels really healthy, I feel as though I'm really seen for who I am now, not the 
not the conditioning stuff that I was carrying around before. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. That's priceless. Yeah, it's it's been really nice. Mm. And so, so, oh, these are my own words, but it just sounds so refreshing. Oh, massively, massively. But the whole time, and with Mark, like it's been, we've said this from the moment we met, it's I like you, show me more. That's it. Like there's no, there's no like pressure for anything else. And on paper, we are, you know, we, we joke about this all the time saying how we've been complete, under completely different rocks our whole life. But on paper, it doesn't make sense. But in real life, it feels like it makes a lot of sense. And just the whole time it is, I like you, show me more. Mm-hmm. And that's how we've been going through things. So, so far, so good. Well, don't let go of that. That's the, that, that. Those words, I like you, show me more, could be the premise of every long-term relationship and should people choose to marriage, like every day. Totally. That, you know, that that sense of choice and I like you, show me, like show me more, show me more. Like we never, we never truly just, again, curiosity, leading, leading, leading out relationships with curiosity and a willingness to see more in the other person and a willingness to show more of ourselves. Absolutely, which I think is what happens in a lot of long-term relationships, particularly when you do have young children, you become more operational and you actually think that you know the other person inside out when you don't. You don't know them inside Mm -hmm. out and the 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 moment that you think you do, desire goes, you lose the magic. Um, there's just so so many things that happen when you really think that you know someone inside out. Whereas if you go, I like you, show me more. It's like, okay, show me another layer, show me another angle, show me another side to you, um, which I think is really, really beautiful. And I will say that in getting to know Mark, I've really had to realise perhaps in the past that I was much more codependent than I would be willing to admit. Mm. and getting into a relationship now having so much more awareness of who I am and what I truly value and not having any preconceived notions or any expectations on it um it's been I keep saying the word healthy but really really healthy and in many ways Mark holds up a mirror to me for things that I need to work on but I don't need to go to him for that if that makes sense yeah like something will come up and I'll be like oh you know Kylie five years ago would have been pointing the finger outwards but now it's like oh I see I see why this has come up this is me and then when you own your stuff it's so empowering you know you own your own stuff puts you back in the driver's seat like we've spoken about gives you curiosity and it's that choice it's that oh yeah I'm choosing to get to know you each day rather than that obligation yeah and the yes and the reason why that's such a healthy place to be in and stay in is that you're your longest relationship so the only relationship that's guaranteed in your lifetime is the one that you have with you so married not married dating whatever your relationship status if you can like if you can maintain that sense of looking inward and pointing the finger back to yourself and checking in with yourself before reaching out and being, what would this other person say or what would this other person think, then you're going to have a far more rich and fulfilling life because you know that um, you take full responsibility and you know that you're always your best cheerleader and that you're always there for yourself. And the people that are in your life enhance it, enhance that relationship that you have, enhance that self-intimacy. And you've got more to get, you're more generous in that state. This is the, one of those paradoxes, I think, when you give more to yourself, mm. you're actually more generous. Oh, completely. And I just think there's so, so much freedom in owning your own stuff, which again, it might sound counterintuitive because it's like, oh gosh, if I have to look at myself, what's and all, you know, that might feel really heavy, but it's, it gives you so much freedom, Lauren, because when you own your own stuff, it dissolves resentment. And I think resentment's the biggest killer in relationship. And so if you're owning like, oh, this is my thing, and you're not looking to someone to fix you, it's like there's just this, you know, it's a different level of polarity, I guess. Mm. And it just dissolves that resentment. And it's not even in, not even just 
in romantic partnerships. I think in parenting, you know, it's always about us, like the issues that come to the surface, the things that anger us with our kids. It's most of the time about us. <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's, our, it's our own stuff. Yes. Yes. And on that note, I wanted to bring up something. I see you as someone who's making some really significant shifts in their life and work right now. This is just my spidey senses. (laughs) I get the sense sense that the next chapter of your voice is coming through. Can you share with us what you have to say and what it is that you want to be known for? And you might not know forever, but just for a next for now. Yeah, just for now. Yeah, you are getting all the inside scoops. I was gonna say to you, <laughs> I've not I've not spoken like about Mark or anything. So people will be like, oh, ding ding ding. Um, yes, okay. Yes, you're totally right. And I think that um people who have followed along for a while have noticed absolutely a shift. There's, you know, again, for context for um, your listeners, because I know you've got a community of women that will be listening along who are like, who is this Kylie woman? And congratulations if they're still listening. (laughs) They've made it through. (laughs) But um, I own the Kind Parenting Company. So a lot of my audience and community has been surrounded, has been focused on babies and toddlers and parenting. And there's definitely been a shift for me in the last couple of years where I still am very passionate about being a conscious and invested and kind parent. Absolutely, that's it's still definitely within me. But I have not been as immersed in that world as I was when my boys were younger. And I am definitely feeling more of a pull towards speaking directly to women, whether they have children or not. Um and more, I guess, the self de- self development, self curiosity, um, the podcasting world really lights me up. And so, I have been struggle in struggle a little bit the last couple of years in working out what direction I want to go. And I keep coming back now to following the feeling of expansion. And similar to getting to know Mark, some of the things and the moves that I'll be making might not make sense on paper but they make sense in my body. So following the expansion, I really want to keep podcasting. That's one of my most favorite things to do. Having the chance to speak to women like yourself over on the podcast, grow that community there. I really, I have a vision for something that I'm work, that I've been working on a little bit, which I won't go into too many details now, but definitely in the online space for women who want to learn more about journaling, more about themselves, events. Like I've held events over the last couple of years minus 2020, which speaks for itself. Um, I'd love to get back into the event space, yeah. retreat. Yeah. That that really speaks to me. Yes, yeah, I can see and feel all of that for you and just the creation of this ecosystem almost where it's like some of the things that you've done but bringing them bring them up to the next level and all of them kind of one thing feeding the next thing and just creating something really beautiful and really you I can feel that a hundred percent and you know just in the spirit of being completely vulnerable and honest with you here one of the things that have been a str- one of the things that has been a struggle for me is, you know, in the parenting space and then going through a divorce. It's like so many people turn to me for parenting advice, and then I'm so aware of the adverse experience that going through a divorce can have on children. That I've been going through things like, you know, I, w- I won't say imposter syndrome, but imposter thoughts of being like, well, who am I to share things on this topic when I'm aware that this is a really hard dynamic? And, you know, there's all of these other moving parts in the background. But when I turn the dial down on that stuff and just listen to my body and what feels expansive versus what feels restrictive, that's the path that I'm following. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Always, always, always follow expansion. And I just want to normalize to people, if you feel contraction, that's okay. It's not from what Kylie's saying and from what I know about ex- being an expansion is it's it's okay to go into contraction. There's something there to be 
learnt from to take away to remember about yourself or maybe even a warning light where you thought what was expansive is actually has actually met a, like there's been a metamorphosis of it into something else. So, but just when you notice you're in contraction, then ask yourself what it is that you can, you need to do. Do you need to stay in it just for a moment? And then most importantly, how can you start to edge out of it? Is that, would you agree? So yeah. And I've, yeah. would you agree with that, Kylie? Completely. And I'm so glad that you mentioned it because I would hate for people to be listening and go, well, I feel a bit of restriction when I walk into work, so I'm definitely not walking into there. But it's just noticing when you feel it and then what are the things that you can do to move towards freedom and expansion while still at times having to put your foot in the other world of feeling restriction because that, that's life. There are times that you, you know, you don't feel lit up and things can feel a bit tight and, you know, like you're closing up that's life you've got to have that polarity of of both ends but I guess specifically speaking about when we talk about the direction that I want to take over the next couple of years I could go for the pros and cons list and do what feels right on paper you know based off financial Mm. decisions and things like that Mm -hmm. or or I can follow what feels right in my gut and my body yes yes Now, we've talked a lot today about what women grapple with, ourselves included, and what we conceal and why. What are three things that you want women struggling with being their fullest selves to know? Mm. Um, Three things on the spot. Okay. I would say the first one is that when you are struggling, anytime you're going through a really low moment, and trust me, I have been there, is knowing, like we spoke about earlier, Lauren, that something positive can come from it and there will be a message there will be a reason for why you're going through this struggle but you might not be able to grab the thread of what that is until you're through it so keep pushing through keep moving forward and it will you know begin to unravel and make more sense to you eventually Um, another one is to know that it is part of the human experience you know we can't We can't live a life where we feel love and lit up and fun and excitement unless we know what it feels like to also have those low moments, that despair, that uncertainty, feel like we're breaking at times. Mm. Um, You know, like we spoke about with the bathroom storm moments, sometimes you've got to drop the pile of sticks Mm. to to know what order to pick them back up in and to know what ones to leave on the floor. So it can be a real invitation to refine what's important to you, which, you know, I'm I'm big on reminding people that post-traumatic growth or post-challenge growth is real. And in life, I think that we're all here to grow because no one wants to feel stuck in their own life. So just understanding that even though this challenge or this hard time feels really, really heavy, um, it, it's going to serve you eventually. Um, and another one is to speak to other women and share your truth because when you share the parts of you that you're willing to share, and that doesn't mean that you have to do it on social media, but when you are honest and you can be vulnerable and your authentic self, it's such a gift for you to be able to do that, but it's a real gift for other people in your life. And, you know, I say this a lot of the time with my girlfriends and they will share something that's hard to share. I'll just like thank them and say thank you for sharing that with me because not only does it deepen our connection and our friendship but it gives me permission to do the same thing again and I think that being seen for who you really are is just so special and I can honestly say hand on my heart I think that it's only now you know in my 30s that I really do feel seen for who I am so being vulnerable can be a bit of a, a bit of an unlock into allowing people to see you. Yeah. Yep. 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 I really, what you shared are three absolute gems and the part there at the end. I, do you think that we value being seen in a different way as we go into our thirties and then forties than we did in our 20s is there a difference there for you 
Oh, massively, like worlds apart from me. And I think I've been really reflecting on why I am the way I am or why I've made choices that I've made. And it's so clear for me now to look back right to my childhood and I can see things and go, oh, no wonder, no wonder I have valued mm. X because I can I can remember so clearly childhood memories that were imprinted on me that would make a child think that that's the most important thing. And so I guess what I have found, and I'm excited, like I'm excited to get into my 40s and my 50s and my 60s and keep learning and growing, but you you just get to know yourself more and you get to understand yourself more. And yet you do value actually who you are as a person yep. over over the beliefs that you've been carrying around about what's important. Yep. Yes. Yes. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited too. I just think, I always think the best is yet to come. If you live, it's a bit like what you said. I like you show me more. I just, I always try to live as the best is yet to come. Like I don't ever want to think that the best has already happened. Like the best is still yet to come. And that sense of excited anticipation about what the future holds so that I'm curious and willing and open and not thinking, oh, birthdays are behind me or anything like that. It's just, yeah, I think the best is yet to come. <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. I, I've never had that thought of being like, oh, my best, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Like when I've had people say, you know, reach out on Instagram and say things like, you know, do you think you'll ever find love again? Do you think you'll find this? Do you think you'll find that? I'm like, of course I will. Like, yeah, like, of, co- like, of course. Yeah. yeah, right. You know, yeah. you've got to, you've got to live life like it's rigged in your favor. Yes, yes, you do. And then it just coincidentally rigs itself in your favor. <laughs> That's the magic. That's the magic. Um, Carly, I have some quick shoot questions for you to wrap up our incredible podcast episode today are you ready to answer off you know off the cuff just when I ask you these quick shoot questions let's do it (laughs) okay what is your favorite sensation oh fun just dropped in for me then straight away that's that's been on it's been on my mind a lot yes Um, yes I don't know is that technically a sensation yeah yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, I and and to speak to that, sensation can be whatever you want it to be. It can be something that you touch, that you hear, that you feel, that you smell, that you it can be it's anything that generates a a, a favorable response. I'd put it that way. Mm. So yeah. Well, I feel I feel like fun and laughter. I've been laughing a lot more lately. So yeah. We'll go with yeah, good medicine. A, a, a good laugh is a lot like an orgasm, right? It's that that release totally. and that, you know, that full body experience and you're just in it and you're in it and it's, yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, would, I would put sex and orgasms under the umbrella of fun. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's all overlapping. I'm seeing the web. <laughs> What's your favourite secret place? The beach. Mm. what's one secret talent you possess oh my gosh see this quick fire secret talent mm-hmm. fuck <laughs> I don't know I don't have a talent next <laughs> secret talent um <laughs> to be advised <laughs> you, oh you will gosh. have something you will have something a um, secret talent yeah <laughs> Why am I so stuck on this? What's yours? <laughs> this, is, this is like when someone says, someone says wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> no, she can't turn it around on me. I don't know the answer. <laughs> what did we say before about it being okay to not know the answer? It's okay. Yeah. I don't... Okay. Pass. I'm really good at, I'm really, really good at cooking steak in butter, like to perfection. <laughs> okay. The secret, like, Secret talent is I'm really, really good at doing that. That's not my only secret talent, but that's the first one. That came to okay, all right. TBC. If you, yeah, if you invite yeah. me, if you invite me back, I will. I will. I'll have a whole I'll, list. I invite you back, and that's the one question I'll make sure to highlight and ask you again. What's <gasps> your secret pleasure? Secret pleasure. Well, my biggest pleasure is re- like one of my biggest pleasures is reading. Like I love 
I love to read. I don't know if it's secret, secret pleasure. Ah, oh, something that no one knows that it's a pleasure. I don't know, Lauren. These are, these are hard. <laughs> <It's> hard. <laughs> Because I don't know what, like, how secretive we're meant to be going here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you get to decide. It's like that's the thing about secrets is we get to, there are layers to secrets and we get to decide whether, like, my steak one obviously isn't, like, that isn't mm. that secretive because it's not like, oh, wow, I feel exposed. But, um, <laughs> but. Yeah, feel feel into what your secret, yeah, your secret pleasure is. It could just be something that happens for, um, for just a nanosecond, and or like that moment where you get into the water and you take a breath, and you know, just that it could just be something so mm. split second that you that you you forget that something small can bring so much. So much I guess just when you're speaking then for me secret I guess secret pleasures things that I enjoy every day that probably no one realizes I enjoy are more to do with the kids like I will see something little that they'll do you know like the way that they'll they'll delicately put their soft toy in a position that is important to them you know they'll nice, little yeah. th- little things like that are I guess secret pleasures for me that you know like I'll walk around the house and I'll see something and I'll think oh that brings me so much joy, but it's so ordinary that I would never think to mention it. Yeah. Um, yep, yep. Yeah. I'm, yep. I'm failing. I'm failing the rapid no, fire round. No, no such thing. No such thing. No, you'll know the answer to this one. Who's one woman who's really seen you? Oh, my friend. I've got two women that I feel have really seen me that both just came to mind then um, to my friends, Anna and Kat. I just feel so seen and so understood and so um okay as I am yeah beautiful now last one one -one one-on-one conversation or mingling through a bustling soiree oh one-on-one conversation every time (laughs) mingling through a bustling soiree does not sound like a good time to me I would have my force field on (laughs) you'll have your cancer crab shell activated (laughs) I'll have my Joe Goldberg black hat on. <laughs> she totally. said she's here, but she's out to lunch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carly, it has been illuminating to speak with you. I have, I, yeah, I, I value you. I appreciate you. I love you. I love watching your, I love watching your journey unfold. I wish I could come up with more original words than that, but I love witnessing you and witnessing you in your power and all that you stand for through, um, through Instagram and your podcast. And I know the best is yet to come for sure, for sure. Um, and just, I just want to thank you for the way that you've shared today and um, in through your sharing, it was something that you said similarly just a few moments ago, through your sharing I've learnt new things as well and gained new perspectives on things that I thought I knew pretty well inside and out. So I just wanted to give you a really big thank you for the gifts that you brought forward today. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to have this chat with you today. It has been such a pleasure. And I'll also just share with you that the start at the start of our conversation when you shared a bit of a bio and you, you know, you said such beautiful things about me, I felt so seen then. And the fact that like, you know, you reached out to me the other day and said, What things do you want me to put you by? And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> Say what you want. Like that and, and I truly don't like I don't mind what people say, but I was like, oh my gosh, she gets it. Like, no wonder I felt like I didn't have to say anything. Like you, I think, see you really do see what I'm what I'm here to do. And I'm so grateful for that. It feels very, very special. And I am incredibly excited to listen to your podcast and to have another chat with you another time. Yeah, most definitely. Let's do it. I mean, yeah, when we get together, there's some special magic, right? Like there's something, there's something there and there's always more. There's always more to, 
we always on our conversations, this will no doubt be my longest podcast, by the way. Just like, <laughs> I think mine was your longest one. So totally. I know. Know it's about length, but the quality and is I, there. <laughs> and Lauren, I'm already sat here and I'm like, but, 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 but. <laughs> we could add, we could add. We so definitely we could. To, we will have to brainstorm some other, other threads to chat about and tee that up because, yeah, your podcast, over you're the episode that we did together is one of my most listened to episodes understandably so because you're wonderful oh thank you thank you thank you for activating me um Kylie where can we find you I'm visible <laughs> <All around. laughs> you can find me on Instagram if you just search Kylie Camps she's there most days yeah and your yeah. incredible podcast is, is it available anywhere? Is it just uh, or only through Apple? Thank you for asking. It's everywhere that you listen to podcasts. And if you just search Kylie Camps, it will pop up because it's very originally titled the Kylie Camps podcast. Yeah, but does what it says on the label, right? That's what works. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing obscure. <laughs> All killer, no filler. Thanks, Kylie. <gasps> um, I hope this episode has contributed to your understanding of your secret self. If you enjoyed it, please share it on Instagram and tag me so that more women can feel seen and understood. And if you always want to be in on the secrets women keep, then subscribe so you don't miss a whisper.